Today we are uh, doing another LeetCode question, finding the pivot index. Uh, my name's Ian and I make math videos, uh, but today we're gonna be solving a programming problem. Just as a heads up before the rest of the video, um, th this one's kind of longer in the future. I wanna keep it to 10 minutes, uh, just uh, as a personal goal for myself. When I'm solving these problems, it'll be a little bit faster also, but for like the viewer, it's not as, crazy uh it's easier to watch and it's more accessible um because you don't want to watch like a full hour video and have to like skip through things or check and find out where the good parts are um although i will add chapters down below um i think why i'm going to decide to upload the rest of this full video uh and like how i solve this problem is just because uh it's authentic and it'll give uh like the viewer an understanding of like what I am doing to solve these problems. Uh, like I like to think that I have the ability to solve these problems, but uh, I need to practice and get better at them. Um, so at least for me, it, it doesn't, I, I, not all of these I can solve instantly. Um, and I want to show that. Uh, the other is I'll be able to look back at them, historically speaking, and kind of see where I've messed up, uh, evaluate and improve upon like the, the mistakes that I made. Um, and uh, maybe you guys can pick up something too. Anyway, without further ado, uh, back to the video, thanks. So here's another example, one, two, three, and uh, there's no index that straddles the left and the right. Uh, similarly, two, one, negative one, output is zero because uh, to the left is zero and to the right is, uh, the sum is zero. The length of the array is um, up to 10,000 and the numbers themselves are anywhere between, uh, are, have a magnitude of a thousand or less. And it's the same as that. So. Let's take a quick look. Let's maybe just do some whiteboarding. Uh, let's whiteboard this out. So uh, rule, like we have a couple of rules and rule one is like R1, I guess, is uh, or the constraint is that uh, L sum uh, is equal to R sum and uh, like um, L sum is the sum from I equals zero to uh, J, I don't even remember how to do summations, but to uh, J and where it's like X, I, uh, R sum equals uh, I equals J plus one to N of X, I. Is then minus one, and if the index is on the left edge of the array, then the sum is zero, and then the right edge of the array, array is also zero. So I guess like we can do like uh, a max function instead just to make it something like well I don't know it's more of like a piecewise uh, zero uh, when I 
equals j and then when i is smaller than j similarly when uh, i equals n minus 1 or I guess when i equals n and then when i is smaller than n oops I guess I could write it. Okay. Um, so I think those are that, and then rule two is like. return leftmost pivot. I think for this, this is like uh, when there's like multiple solutions. Uh, so like non-unique maybe, non-unique solutions. Uh, so those are our rules, and then like as a con, like as a an example. Uh, so example one, we have uh, one uh, seven three six five six as our example. Um, it's already part of the lead code example, but just stepping through it like by hand. Uh, maybe we'll just uh, well yeah we'll keep this and then. Um, Like what we can do is uh, we need to take like the the L sum. So we need to add like some number of these and then we need to add uh, similarly add some number of these. And uh, check that they're equal. Um, so if we were to do this by hand, it'd be like, take this value and is this equal to, well, I guess we can assign, like this is the first value, right? Zero, is this like equal to this? And then you can maybe check the next combination, that equal to that. And then is this equal to this and so forth, all the way up to the point at which you do something like this. This, this is also zero, right? When it's outside of the boundary. I guess this more looks like this. Cool. That actually doesn't look too good. But anyway, um, so now that we have, we can do that. Uh, and if we were to do this, then we would need to uh, walk, like basically, um, We'd have to take these windows, and there are uh, n plus two windows. Uh, but, and then for every window, we would have to uh, 
uh, then compute the sum. And uh, so like this is step one, step two, and that is, that would yield uh, a discovery, like uh, if it's solvable, like is solvable, I guess, we'd, we'd come back and we would know like what the index is. But uh, this step is uh, like O of N, right? Because there's N windows that you have to go across. And then this one, the sum is also O of N because you have to, uh, or like it's O of like N minus one, basically O of N, uh, because you have to sum everything to the left and right of the index uh, into two separate sums. Is there like another way uh, which we could determine if uh, they were equal. Um, so in my, in my mind, I think that like we can also do like a like cumulative running sum, right? And then that's uh, will give us two things. It'll give us a total of the array. Uh, and so you can compare that, that, that total to each like running, uh, running sum along the index. So if like every index is the sum of those indexes previously, then you can compare like any given index to a, a, f a future index or like the, the end of the, the array and uh, see the relative difference. And like if the relative difference is equal to the, the, the running sum, uh, then basically half, uh, then you would know that uh, they are of a equal value like they sum to equal values. So that's probably like the, the way of solving or one way of solving. We'll, we'll do that first, I guess. So this is uh, brute force right here, which we did. And it is like uh, O of N squared in terms of like runtime complexity and then memory. Uh, is like constant O one. We can take the same example. Solution number two. Sol one. We probably want like another way of checking for equivalence. That's not, uh, I wonder if there's another way. Um, okay, so uh, if we did a running sum and it's like, uh, like we'll say like let uh, F be a running sum And uh, let the index I represent um, the like running the run sum at uh, the ith index. Then we could say f of uh, n minus one is the sum of the array, or we could just make it a little shorter and say the sum of like, uh, we'll say x, i for all i. Um, and then we can say that, uh, Uh, 
I don't remember when you if you do the summation uh, formula if like when you do uh, value over that that it's like less than or equal to that value. Anyway, well for for our sake we'll just say that's the notation. So f of uh, we'll do like f of the pivot uh, is oh like pivot minus one I guess is the sum of i equals zero to p. Uh, minus one of xi, um, and then we can also just call this like, and then yeah. So then, what we want is uh, so um, our solution. Or like formula is f of p minus one uh, equals f of n minus one minus f of f of p. So we want to check for this. Um, I'm wondering if there's like a way to rearrange this. Yeah, so like I guess you could rearrange this to the like the sum of the array is equal to f p minus one. Uh, plus fp. Um, so we can just add like the, we can check that, uh, that seems actually quite weird. Let's uh, check this actually. So if our pivot index, this is like eight, that's 11. This is our pivot index, right? Then uh, like our pivot index is uh, zero, one, two, three equals index uh, is three. Then, uh, like the running sum up till this point is 11, the running sum up to here is 17, and then uh, the whole sum of the array is uh, 22 plus six, 28, so it's 28, and then it's like, 11 plus 17 equals uh, 28. So it seems to work. That's good. Um, uh, so like as a, as a quicker, like as just a, as a, as a next uh, iterative solution that incremental solution that's like incrementally better, uh, what we can do is just uh, it's like step one, like so solution or our algo will be one, uh, do like run sum of array of, of array to, uh, Um, search uh, run sum for uh, what's called this for equation equation number one where that is true um, three 
return uh, like the first match or negative one. Uh, and then this just has to start start at negative one and at n because we have to include the extra. And so this is uh, like in terms of runtime complexity is O of n for runtime complexity space is uh, O1 if we can reuse the existing array. Um, this is uh, also O of n, whoops, as a runtime complexity because we just have to iterate across every position and check that the um, that position in combination with the position before it uh, sums to the final uh, value. Uh, in terms of space, this is also a constant space. Uh, and then so we end up with like an algorithm that's linear uh, for steps one and two, which, and then the, the return is just the O1 computation. Uh, so the final is uh, just, again, ON and uh, for both space and time. Uh, WRT with respect to uh, space and time. So that's pretty good as a linear uh, solution. And that's maybe something worth coding up. Uh, the question is, can we do like sublinear? Uh, like log n, or it probably like, can't do a constant time unless you have like a bunch of uh, cores or something like that. So I'm wondering if there's an other way, if there's a faster way to search. So this is like in the worst case n, but maybe in the best case we can do less than n and we would need to improve both the the search and the sum to, to something less than n. In the corner cases where like these arrays are empty, we can immediately just return. Oh, I guess they can't be empty by definition of the, the constraints of the, the question. They have to have at least one element, but. At least in, in the one element case, we can fail if it's not zero. Um, it looks like the sum's always going to have to be linear. Hmm. Is maybe, okay, so it doesn't like, to me, it doesn't seem like there's a sublinear solution, but maybe there's a better linear solution. I wonder if there's anything that you could say about like the length, like if there's odd numbers, it's still, like if there's even, if there are even number of elements. No, like you can't conclude anything based on like the metadata of the, of the, of the vector. Like you can't say that like, because it's even that the numbers will, the sums will be un, like odd for example, which would then allow you to say like, 
there is or there isn't a pivot. Uh, but we can't do that. Um, I'm just going to look back at uh, the problems here. Yeah, we can't sort this because sorting's n log n. So we can't like take shortcuts and like figure out what in the array is. We can't reason about the rest of the array by doing, by looking at certain indices. Is there anything else in the uh, description? Strictly to the left, strictly to the right. Um, the nums will always be between negative a thousand and above a thousand. Uh, I mean, we could use a hash map and run through the array and then checking that every entry is well you can't even do that I was like thinking like you enumerate all the possibilities or all the the like counter values that you need to to negate the value on the left side and then compare check in like constant time if they're there. So like, for example, uh, you find a f like a, a one on the left side, then you know the right side has to have a one to subtract. I, I guess you'd have like Like, so it's like kind of like a, a water level or something like that. And then as you iterate over the left and right from the right and left that you track the, the, the sum from, or the, the, the relative difference from either side. But again, you're still going to need to look at all the different combinations. And in terms of like ways to to split up these numbers, there are at least n plus two windows. And you don't want to recompute the sum, but maybe you can memoize it. So probably just implement the, the solution that we have, but mm -hmm. as a an alternative idea, you could take like some array and then recurse on different parts of it. And then as you recurse, uh, down like divide and conquer kind of style um, when you like sum up these indexes they they memoize and then uh, other function calls that like look to sum these two indexes just look at the memoization and compare and then like what you do is you compare one section against another section uh, and in this case Actually, you don't even need, like you, you. You don't need to like sum all of the combinations. You just need to sum like a, an expanding window on the left and the right. Like I don't even know if you need to do a running sum over the whole. Uh, 
array. Maybe you just need to do it from a certain amount from the left and a certain amount from the right. In, in like the best cases, in like the worst case, you might have to go all the way over. That's probably like a better solution. Okay, so we'll come back to this maybe. Um, maybe better, better best case solution, but we'll just use uh, the, the, this algorithm that we have here for sake of time. Okay. So we want to iterate over this and we're, we're going to use C++ for size zero and then i smaller than the length of the array. We will increment the iterator or the like the index and then um, say that uh, the index is equal to the uh, sum from the previous index. Uh, this actually has to be one. And then what we're going to do is do the exact same thing and uh, for, like I guess check like if uh, so like if zero equals um, nums nums size minus one um, this is the first case like return uh, the what do you return when it's like the pivot is, oh, the pivot is the zeroth index. Return zero. And then the last case of, of this is case one, one uh, pivot is first, uh, is like zeroth index. And then Uh, case like last case if it is last index and it's like return I don't even know uh, like nums size I don't even think we need this minus one like Yeah, so I, like I think we only need this one because this will always be true when this is always true. Do you remove redundant and equal to case one. Uh, this is our where we do our search. This is our sum step from the out algorithm we outlined before to and then we can do uh, if um, nums i minus one plus nums i equal nums the last uh, index like if our, our equation holds true, then just return uh, um, i, I believe, which is the pivot. I guess we could have named this uh, uh, pivot instead to be a little bit better, but yeah. I guess uh, this will just be the default case. So that is our solution um, in terms of constraints. We can definitely iterate over 10,000 items. The sums uh, of like 10,000 items, so checking for overflows. Uh, check uh, bit 
widths. So we know that I'll just hide uh, this so you can see, but we know that there's this. Um, so one, or uh, like 10K times uh, 10K elements multiplied by 1K uh, mag, like max val uh, results in uh, like 10 mil uh, in total, total summation. So we'll only get a number that's as big as 10 million. Um, and uh, since we're using, we use uh, int32, assumedly, uh, which is like 2 billion um, bit width is not an issue. Issue since like 10 mil is less than 2 bill. Cool, so that's done. Uh, we can go on to uh, test other things here. Um, so in the general case, we could take that, right? Manually test general case. We have uh, the summation and we go starting at the first index at the last. So this is turns into uh, like one, eight, uh, 11, 17, 22, 28. And uh, for reference, like these are the, this is the run sum. And then these are the indexes. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now we can uh, iterate. We first check that like zero is equal to five, doesn't matter. Uh, then we go on to the search part and see if we start at the first index or like index one, not first index. And then we check that if one plus zero is equal to, to 28, it's not. Uh, because nine is not equal to 28. And then we do eight plus 11, which is 19 is not equal to 28. 11 plus 17 uh, is 28. And then we return uh, I, which is like one, two, three. Um, and three happens to be the right pivot, pivot index. So correct returns proper pivot. We can try, uh, so this is the general case. We can try a corner case, and we know that the, the minimum length is always greater than or equal to one. Uh, we test a uh, corner case uh, of one element. So in this case, we do a sum, step one, and one happens to be uh, the same value as the length of the array, so this sum doesn't happen. Um, if the zero equals uh, the last, last value in the array, which it doesn't return zero, so that we skip over, um, then we try and do this search. And so uh, if we iterate over the, the array, skipping, and, and we start at the second element, there is no second element, so we just skip this part. Uh, and then we check when Oh, so there is no, yeah, so we messed up. So the last case is actually still the same as this, which 
we don't need. Um, return nums that size negative one. This will never happen because the first case will always pass. And then otherwise, we're always returning negative one. Okay, so that was a good catch. Um, manly test. Bug fix. Return negative one on no match. And don't use uh, zero. Use the zeroth index as a pivot for the base case. Duh, that makes sense. Um, any other base cases? We could try two, and I think that's it manually. Test corner case number two uh, of two elements. Two, just to check the boundary conditions of the fours. Uh, so from the second element onwards, add, we add this, this becomes one, three, uh, and then check if the, if, if the sum is equal to zero, the sum is not, then we, uh, for the second, starting at the second element, check if the, the, the running sum from that element and the previous element equal the total. Uh, by definition, the total is three and the sum of that same index plus the previous will never equal. Uh, the sum, will, again, is not equal to zero, so we return negative one. There's no value. This is correct. Um, okay, so this is a solution. Uh, I guess we could check to see if it's correct. Um, let's see. Uh-oh. So our output in this test case was negative one, um, although, and the answer should have been zero. So uh, if the pivot was zero, then the left would be zero and the right would be zero. So what seems to have happened Oh, so when it straddles the zeroth index, it uh, needs to be zero. So we have a small bug in our code. Uh, failed submission, no. Whoops. Uh, we'll look at this later and come back on it, but uh, because we read the, or I read the rules wrong, uh, it's actually, um, we need to search from the zeroth index uh, and um, exclude the zeroth uh, index from the sum on the right. And uh, likewise for the, well, I think we already did the last index. Um, so we can clean up this. Don't need that, it's a redundant case. We can uh, check that 
zero equals the uh, nums, or actually, this may actually even be the same value sometimes. Uh, So like when the size of the array is one and then it's like, this will always equal zero. Um, and we don't want that to be true. So when the pivot is zero and it's a one length, isn't that always true then? So maybe it's not a bug. Yeah, so this, needs to be fixed. So this is always true. It's not, that's not negative one. Okay. And then I guess, yeah, we already checked for the end case. here and we check that this actually breaks I think on the last one on the last index uh, because you're trying to compare the sum against the previous two indexes, but the previous two indexes, if it is including the last element, uh, will never equal. Uh, so we need to do this again. And zero equals, uh, nums so if we exclude the last element and So I'm going to do something hacky because like this uh, already checks for the first case of it. I'll just do a uh, nums.size is greater than one and check the last two elements. I think this is good. I think even here we can. Uh, 
Uh oh. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we output five. This is like negative four. And the subtraction of negative numbers yields zero. Well, that's a problem. We can just make all, we can always just make the numbers positive, but uh, I guess we could uh, just compare instead. We don't, we can rearrange this formula and just do this. And so if the last element Is that right? So if we take the difference of the two things, so we have the sum in the far right, and we have, if we exclude the sum, Yeah, we exclude the last index value. If we take uh, the the total sum, we, we minus the 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 cumulative sum before it, we get the like in order to get what the cumulative sum was. Yeah, we just check. We don't even need this. It's like. Uh, what is the cumulative sum before, and if that equals zero. Okay. That was a messy one, but uh, we got there. Uh, thinking about this code. Uh, so I guess we want to talk about business applications, uh, and we want to maybe write it a bit cleaner, uh, and then can possibly return to the better best case solution. Um, well, we can write this better, compute uh, running sum per index, that's obvious. And then we can check for these two things immediately. These uh, save a lot of computation if they're true.
Well, I don't know. Whatever. Just leave it at the end. Um, so, like, if we rewrote this, it'd be like the sum is equal to the first element or... the left-hand sum is equal to zero, excluding the last element. So if we exclude the last element and it equals zero, or if we exclude the first element and it equals zero. Is there another way of writing that, the first and last? If you exclude the first or the last, And the first, like if you exclude the last, then that's like n minus two is zero. And then if you exclude the first, it's the difference between I'm wondering if you can rewrite this part. It's like F like the this the run sum at n minus one minus the run sum at n minus two subtracted from the run sum at n minus one. So they're both like n minus one and then you do like minus n is zero or n or the, or the difference of uh, n minus one minus n minus two. So it's like, uh, maybe another way of writing this is like, like num zero equals uh, nums nums size minus one or what we care about is like nums uh, n minus one equals like minus nums nums that size and minus two equals nums nums size Minus two and or actually minus one, then we minus that whole phrase. Yeah. So the difference in the last element, two indices, is equal to this. No, it's more like this, like. Uh, the difference between the last one and the uh, one before it. What is the, how much the last index was and then we have minus the last index from like the cumulative run sum. Uh, and then like that basically gives us like, and the run sum of nums two minus one 
And if you rearrange this, this goes the other side. Um, and then these two cancel out and then you end up. So this is how the reduction of this results in this. Uh, but the reason why I care about this is because I care about the general case. And it's like something like this minus num zero. If I rearrange this. And it's minus the first element or minus the last element. So we could probably rewrite this in a better way. It's something like uh, int first equals nums zero, int last equals nums dot size minus one. And we compute the running sum. And then we do if zero equals the running sum minus one minus the first uh, pivot equals zero else if zero equals nums dot size minus one minus last equals uh, size minus one else uh, we search and do this. making sure that I got the math right here. So negative num sums two equals zero. Yeah, I think I got it right. So there's our search, uh, and then we check that pivot equals i, we break, And by default, it's negative. I think this also works. Uh, this formulation here looks somewhat similar. And we can do this like zero equals nums like this minus the, the sum of the previous two. So it's like some of the first, some of the last, or the or the cumulative sum, sum. So really what we need to do is like, 
add in a zero at the beginning, add in a zero at the end. I think that's what we need to do. To make this like even more general, we can just skip all of this and just do nums.push front. I don't know what the zero nums push back zero. And then we do this whole thing. Uh, we compute the sum, we do our search. I think this is just an equivalent statement. Uh, and then we return pivot. Uh, plus one. Minus one. What's a vector? I don't know if there's a constant time. See if this is constant time. Yeah. Okay. It's still linear. Yeah. There you go. Much better solution, much cleaner. Uh, as for the other thing that we had going about the other approach, is there a better way to search from the left and the right? Not with not not without knowing the input. I, I don't think. Yeah, the, the, the sum, you're always going to have to know what's in the array in order to like discount other cases. And to do that, you need to at least once over everything. So it's always going to be linear. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so in terms of business application, if we had this function here, uh, the code seems like really easy to read uh, at this point, much better than the previous code. Um, linear uh, would you want to make do a full sum over the data set I mean like for small data sets that's fine for large data sets uh, we could dramatically like shortcut this process if we knew the the sum up front like what they were doing here and instead you just have to 
only do the left sum up until like the correct answer. So like in the best case, you could speed this up if you knew the sum ahead of time. And like depending on like what real system it is, that might be actually quite feasible. You could have uh, like on every database insert or every whatever, like every manipulation of some data set, you can uh, trigger uh, an updated uh, like running count, running sum, uh, and you don't need to maintain the historical running sums. Uh, and then you could do this like a little bit quicker, I suppose. But I guess at the end of the, end of the day, it's still linear. So nothing much to add here. <sighs> okay, that's it. Thank you. See you in the next one.